Co-Immunoprecipitation and Immunoblotting by Richard Logan. Immunoprecipitation is a technique of precipitating a protein antigen out of a solution using an antibody that specifically binds to that particular protein. This process can be used to isolate and concentrate a particular protein from a sample containing many thousands of different proteins. Immunoprecipitation of intact protein complexes is known as co-immunoprecipitation, in other words, co-IP. Co-IP works by selecting an antibody that targets a known protein that is believed to be a member of a larger complex of proteins. By targeting this known member with the antibody, it may become possible to pull the entire protein complex out of the solution and thereby identify unknown members of this complex. This works when the proteins involved in the complex bind to each other tightly, making it possible to pull multiple members of the complex out of the solution by latching onto one member or the antibody. Immunoblotting, which you all may know as Western blotting, is a technique used for analysis of individual proteins in a protein mixture. In immunoblotting, the protein mixture is applied to a gel electrophoresis in a carrier matrix to sort the proteins by size, charge, or other differences in individual protein bands. The separated protein bands are then transferred to a carrier membrane. This is called blotting. The proteins adhere to the membrane in the same pattern as they have been separated due to interaction of the charges. The proteins on this immunoblot are then accessible for antibody binding for detection. Remember, the antibodies are conjugated with fluorescent or radioactive labels or enzymes leading to a coloring of emission of light, which enables detection. CoIP is a powerful technique that is used regularly by molecular biologists to analyze protein-protein interactions. A protein complex can be isolated from a protein mixture by using an antibody that is specific for one protein of the complex, hence the CoIP technique. To perform CoIP, first the antibody against a target protein is coupled to sulfurous beads through protein A. Then the complexes containing the target protein are immunoprecipitated with the antibody coupled beads by centrifugation. Protein components in the complexes are visualized by immunoblotting using antibodies specific to the different components. Here is another illustration of CoIP. I just included this just so you can see how the antigens are detected with Western blotting. And you can see to the bottom left. Title of the study I've chosen is Oligomerization of G protein coupled receptors shown by selective co immunoprecipitation. Recent studies have shown that GPCRs can assemble as high molecular weight homo and hetero oligomeric complexes. This can result in altered receptor ligand binding, signaling, or intracellular trafficking. So, in the study, the authors directly examined whether 5-HT1 receptors are capable of forming oligomeric complexes with a variety of GPCRs by specific immunoprecipitation of each receptor followed by identification of the co-precipitate proteins using immunoblot analysis. The author's main objective was to determine the specificity of the interactions across different GPCR subfamilies to gain further insight into the mechanism of GPCR heteroglomerization. So, to directly test for hetero-oligomerization of different GPCR combinations, the authors of this paper use sequential co-immunoprecipitation and immunoblot analysis of cells co-transfected with differentially epitope-tagged receptors. As you can see right here to the right. Now remember, oligomerization is a process of converting monomer or mixture of monomers to oligomer, and it may be a dimer, trimer, or tetramer. Now to the right, it shows that this shows the CMYC tagged 5-HT1A, which is right there in lane number one, the receptor co-precipitated with flagged tagged versions of all receptors, which you see in number two, three, four, or other GPCRs. And this finding is that the flagged and CYMCA tagged versions of the 5-HT1A receptor were co-precipitated and it provides direct evidence that this GPCR forms a homo oligomer. So we can consider it as oligomer because it may be different because of the number of monomers. The, st the strength 
His findings suggest that GPCRs have a natural tendency to form oligomers when close transfection to cells. But since this study was a new one, future studies should therefore investigate the presence and physiological role of GPCR hetero oligomers in cells in which they are endogenously expressed. So my question for y'all is, what is a key difference between immunoprecipitation and co-immunoprecipitation? References.